Hello everybody and welcome to today's video. Today I will be doing a painting inspired from my garden. I have already sketched out the flower and the leaves. I will be using watercolor paints for this project. I will continue to use this messy plate as my paint mixing palette so don't be alarmed when you see it. Ok so let's get started with the painting. I am starting with painting the leaves first. And with watercolors I always feel like it is better to start with lighter tones first and then progress to put darker tones. So while I do this, let's talk about the inspiration for this painting. As you know, I am painting a plant from my own garden and for some reason I have always loved this simple flowering plant and more than the flowers, I have always loved its leaves for some reason again. I have always found them beautiful and in the sun they always are so shiny and so pretty. Now you have seen the process of the base coat, let's just speed it up. Now I have started using darker tones of green and layering it up to build the tone that we want. I will continue talking about my inspiration for this painting throughout this video. So as I was saying, this is inspired from my garden and many months back I was taking few pictures of flowers and plants in my garden. And I felt that I should paint few of the flowers in my garden. It's a bit of a different field for me because I have always picked my references or inspirations from uh, say Pinterest or the internet. Don't get me wrong, I still love doing portraits and drawing people. But it's a different feeling to take inspiration from your own surroundings and paint or draw something you have seen or something you have experienced. So I am trying to do that more often and I feel like that's what makes the art more personal and beautiful because the artist itself has experienced it or has some connection with the subject. I have spent many minutes trying to mix the perfect matching color for this flower but I think I failed. Now this is like a tutorial video inside this video. I'll show you how to remove the paint when you have made a mistake in your watercolor painting and you want to clear it up. Just take a clean brush with a little bit of water and apply the water wherever you want the pigment to be removed from. I want to repaint the whole flower so I am just applying the water there. Now that the paint is reactivated with some water, you can just remove it with a clean dry brush or a clean cloth. Be careful not to go back and forth a lot because the paper is wet and it can get easily damaged. You can already see the paint being removed a little bit from the paper. If you want to remove the pigment even more, just let it dry for a little bit and then do the same process again. Since I did not do a good job mixing colors the last time, so I am using this new paint palette. It's a student grade paint but I think it'll do just fine. I'll mainly be using a mix of these purple and pinks. I have always ever only used pencils for all my drawings before and only in the lockdown of 2020 I have ventured out to try paintings. So due to lack of experience and practice, I am nowhere close to being a pro when it comes to painting, especially with mixing colors and deciding which color go with which, you know all this seems very simple but when in practice it's all easy to mess up. But I've learned that practice is the only thing that can make us better so even though I'm not really great at it, I still love to paint and I'll take you along with the journey. So please don't mind me if I mess up a painting here and there. My personal favorite part in this whole painting was drawing little lines on all these leaves so please enjoy this footage.
since I didn't do a good job with the flower, I decided doing a background might help it pop out more. So I painted the whole background with blue and quickly decided I didn't like it and covered it up with black. Now it's all muddy and messy. So I thought putting a white outline over the subject would make it better. Did it make it better? You tell me. So this is how the painting looks at the end. I'm not really happy with the outcome. I love how the leaves look but the rest, the flower and the background looks really messy and muddy. And I was feeling really bad to end the video at this. So I didn't. I attempted a second time but this time with acrylics. I am doing this painting on a mini canvas panel and I have already sketched out the sketch. I feel like I had over complicated the flower the last time so I will try to go as close as possible to the real color but if not it's fine. I will just try to make the painting beautiful and let it be inspired by this flower and not exact replica. And I feel more confident layering colors in acrylics than in watercolor especially with a canvas panel because it doesn't get ruined as easily as a paper. Now that I've mixed the color and everything is ready to paint, the electricity had to go off. But we don't give up just because of a power cut, right? So this is me painting with my mobile flashlight as the light source. I am doing the basic outline first. And this is how it looks. And the power is back. So let me take you through to how I painted this flower. I just laid a base layer with this pink color that I've mixed and then added some highlights and shadows to this on top. I genuinely think that the acrylic flowers turned out way better than what I did in watercolors. Now let's move on to painting the leaves. I had heard about this painting technique in oil paints where they mix paints on the painting itself and not on their palette before. But then again oil paints stay moist for a long time and they can be blended later on. It's not the same with acrylics but I thought I should try it anyway. So as you can see my brush has both a little bit of green and a little bit of yellow and I'm trying to blend it on the canvas itself. After the failure of my last painting, I am taking a step back and here, I am doing everything slowly. I am painting one leaf at a time, one flower petal at a time and concentrating on only that. And by the same technique, I have finished the base layer of all these leaves. Now to add the lines in these leaves and some tiny little details. Again I am trying to do a background color and this time I have mixed some blues and greens and got this amazing beautiful color. I really don't know the name of it, it's like greenish and bluish at the same time. And we lost power again and we paint and fill with the help of a mobile flashlight. I hope you understand my problem here because I have mixed this batch of paint that is ready to be painted. But if I wait for longer till the power comes, the paint is going to dry off. But if I don't wait, I have to film and paint in this low light scenario which is just a mobile flashlight which I am holding it in my mouth actually. So I hope you see the struggle and I hope you understand. Please subscribe because I am really trying hard. Now that this painting is fully dry, I am coating it with varnish to protect it from dust and dirt. I always do a thin coat and it's always good enough to cover the whole painting. Now it's time to look at the final results. So this was our first attempt, done with watercolors, messed up the background but I still like it anyway. 
And here is our second attempt. I can definitely say that this looks much better than the first attempt. I am glad I took the extra time to paint this again. And this mini canvas comes with a little easel. How cute is that? Let's take a look at this painting with its inspiration. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I love doing both these paintings and thanks for coming on this journey with me. See you in the next video. Bye.